face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to an episode of Who Was Really Better? And this week, we're going to cover two very, very offensive ground types in Mudsteel versus Marowak. Both of these two have covered themselves quite a big niche, since usually ground types tend to be defensively really relaxive, but these two have carved themselves the niche that they are offensively very, very capable. While they are on the bulkier side, it's clear that their offensive stance is the one that matters, and also a bit on the slow side, which means they work in a different environment, of course, with rock polish to potential, but in the minds of being here, this trickery where it's all about, we're going to cover that mostly, and of course, just offensive prowess of the Pokemons themselves. Um, small bit of an update here, we don't go into the move sets for these Pokemon, while well, going to talk about it, uh, sadly, my PC was acting up, and well, here we are basically with the minimalistic showcase. So, you know, I'll do my very best to talk about these two Pokemon no matter what. And when I cover, of course, Marowak first, it was introduced first. So, of course, up to me to cover their Oregon theme to find out which one of these two really are better. So, on first glance on Marowak, one could really say just this. The stats really doesn't showcase itself to be a very, very offensive threat, and you know, I get that. Um, looking at the stats here, we're at 6 in HP, 80 in its attack, 110 in its defense, which is fairly high actually, to go with the word special attack at 50, so yeah, not necessarily that usable. Special defense at 80 is actually very respectful for ground type, 80 is making it one of the top 10 ground type special defensively, so that's really great. The speed still, of course, is on the low side, 55. That make good use actually for Trick Room. However, on its own right, yeah, that's kind of low. However, it is an offensive threat, probably one of the strongest, and actually is the strongest ground type offensively due to the Thick Club item. If we have Thick Club in active here, it actually is stronger than Primal Groudon at a base 180 with a Thick Club active. So that's, yeah, that, that's scary. Um, thick Club, of course, is the reason Marowak was OU in Generation 2 and 3. There really aren't anything that hits as hard as Marowak. Sadly though, while it is bulky, the speed the speed is holding it back to get it with an HP that actually is fairly low. 60 base HP isn't necessarily something to write how about. And it is the reason it isn't as capable today and the reason got in a lower form actually. Well, I would have said that I would much more have preferred an evolution of the pre-existing stats or just a real boost to its HP. I can definitely see Marowak's Alolan form being a good response for a thing that maybe it should have gone in the first place. However, uh, as Marowak stands, is one of the greatest ground types in the game due to, of course, a fit club item. And if we look upon its abilities, Battle Loma, Rising on a Rocket, Nothing of these abilities are really that great, however, Rockhead is, I would say, the preferable one to not get recall from Double Edge, but outside that, Battle Armor does make for a fair um, ability to make sure you don't get critted. And Lightning Rod is a VGC exclusive, and the Marowak is, doesn't necessarily do that with Bellow VGC due to being a ground type. That is, of course, weak to what the spread moves such as Surf. Uh, but overall, Marowak is really, really strong, and its move pool is a really interesting one. While I can't showcase it, I can at least show it, or talk about it. <clears throat> and first, I want to just cover the setup moves, because Marowak has two interesting setup moves, the Boot Curse and Sword Stance. I think Sword Stance was more effective in the early generation, since it, of course, isn't that bulky anymore. However, Curse and Trick Room do go hand in hand, and quite frankly, I think Sword Stance is overkill, as long as you have Thick Club, there really aren't that many things that's going to be able to take hits from Marowak. At the same time, Curse could be um, an aspect to be working around quite well. Uh, other than that, you know, its movable is actually fairly fairly up there. It's definitely on the Nidoking King levels where we have a lot of niches in this move pool. There doesn't, it doesn't seem to be so, supposed to be there, yet they are. So a quick runabout about the things that matters, if you're asking me. Uh, we're going to mention, of course, Fresh and um, Double Edge, as mentioned before, but also the Bonerang. Bonerang is almost as hard-hitting as Earthquake. Um, I do believe it has the same base power, just the stab doesn't get as boosted, and of course, accuracy is a bit lower at 90. However, you do hit twice. Hitting twice is always good for every other aspect. I mean, come on. Uh, getting hits twice makes the laser focus aspect of this Pokemon really 
all the more interesting because you get crit twice on it and also goes breaking sub and whatnot and focus action is 30. Uh, Marowak really is one of the few Pokemon that actually in and you can actually Oko Steelix due to this very aspect, not being only being faster, but also hit hard enough to do it, KO it, bit of bone ranks. That's awesome. Uh, as I have a de actually a fair decent variety of filler moves because a special side with both Ice Beam and Thunderbolt and actually Fire Blast. Um, the reason I mentioned this is because while the special attack isn't high, it is an aspect of the Pokemon that can be very usable. Mainly, of course, if you're fending off against the likes of Mantine, being able to send off a Thunderbolt could be really great, even though Stone Age would probably result the worst of it. But just having the X ability, it really does make this Pokemon that much more interesting. Uh, we also have Air Lace, we have, as stated before, Earthquake. Uh, Brutal Swing is something that it gets good with Knockoff, Rock Slide, Stone Edge. And of course, substitutes. When it comes to egg moves, it isn't as interesting, but our aspects here to mention just for the hell of it. Uh, we have Belly Drum, for example, so that's also one of those that sticks away to get with the actual Perish song, which isn't all that bad, actually. We don't have a lock in move, but at the same time, we need to you have Belly Drum. How good is that? Uh, double Kick, Iron Head, and also, of course, as mentioned, um, Endure, which could work with Wiggins policy. Just big shout out here to the Wheels Twin Neil. Though clearly Thick Club is where you're at. When it comes to Mew Tutor, here is where Marowak kind of stands out a little bit because it does get a lot. While all of them aren't relevant, it just it gets it that really makes it interesting. Uh, first and foremost, Stealth Rocks. Just to be able to actually having Stealth Rocks is always going to be a strong niche for a Pokemon. Uh, since Marowak naturally forces Pokemon out, being able to set Stealth Rocks freely due to that very reason really just kind of push the borders a little bit. Uh, we have a low kick, thunder punch, fire punch, which of course, as I mentioned, with Manta already, thunder punch probably would be the better aspect. Uh, focus punch, outrage, throat chop, uh, and actually a few moves that I wish it got that it didn't get was actually pain split, which the Alola form got, so he's gonna have a straight mention. That would have been really good. It was, of course, is the low HP. Uh, when it comes to, however, the um, Moves from previous generation really aren't that many moves that are interesting, but one that definitely worth an honorable mention is Body Slam, which of course helps with the paralyzation. Says, of course, it lowered the opposing Pokemon speed. However, as a long aspect, a usual standard Marowak would look at something like full offensive adamant, enough speed, enough speed Roselia with the base of the ability 50. So, usually, you want to go for roughly 52 in its EV there and then have roughly 200 HP to be able to actually live a close combat from Sulk. Uh, really, that's a standard variant of Marowak and the rest of attack. Um, other than that, basically what you're gonna need is Bone Rank or Earthquake, Stone Edge or Rock Slide, Knock Off or Double Edge, and then a Filler Move. Uh, usually Filler Move can sustain itself with Curse, Sword Stance or Double Edge. Um, but as stated here, the Filler Moves in Knock Off Double Edge is something that I would say are just worth having as a filler as a 3 attacking move and then the last being whatever. Uh, you actually could fill this out even with counter if you feel you can soak a hit and retaliate and you don't can secure that Oka move. We also have Power Punch, which I believe is a fair filler. But as a whole, uh, Marowak is really, really, really scary. And with Stealth Rocks in mind, this Pokemon can actually be tremendously threatening towards a lot of opposing Pokemon. And uh, while it isn't the strongest in OU today, due to course, other ground types such as <clears throat> Landers coming out, there are still a few aspects to mention when it comes to Marowak because it still is a very potent threat. And there really aren't anything comparable to it with the Thick Club in mind. This is a Pokemon that really will strongly hit anything that comes its way, and it does this role very effective if it has the team to support it. So with Marowak out of the way, we're of course going to cover Mudstail here. Mudstail, much like Marowak, is similarly, actually very similar in many aspects. However, its HP stat is where it's kind of raised a bit. Uh, 1 on HP is very, very good for a defensive Pokemon with an actually offensive stat. Attacks at 1 on 25, yeah. Mm, it, it will hurt. It will have to resolve that fairly easy. Defensive stat, a bit lower than Marowak's at 100. Special attack, slightly higher actually, 55. Special defense, also there, slightly higher at 85. But the speed is lower at 35. It definitely is a slower Pokemon of anything. But, you know, it definitely is bulkier and can use its bulk very well to be able to force attacks. 125 is really a very high offensive stat before it's been dealing with. A usually common set with this Pokemon is to have actually run Assault Vest or Choice Band. And now I'll say this, Choice Band really does make this Pokemon impossible to deal with in many aspects. And his abilities really just kind of speaks for itself. Inner Focus and Own Tempo, 
Tell terrible, terrible abilities for equipment itself. Though stamina, mm -mm, there's where it's at. If you get hit by something, you get your defense boosted by one stage, and that could really work in its favor. This is why the Assault West version is so popular, because it means that you it's even harder to kill on both sides of the spectrum after one hit. And of course, you can suspect something like a Chinchino going for that Tail Slab, you can actually boost yourself to be fully defensive once that barrage is over. However, um, I would definitely say this, that usually Mudstail do need to have rest, and has a lot to do with to remain its bulkier aspect. So going for a fully special defensive variant is smart, but definitely make sure that you can recover your HP to be able to be active longer. Since, of course, already stated, 125 attack really doesn't necessarily need an investment to hit hard, and Mud still really represents one of the best stats in the Lowland decks, if anything. But, you know, a Pokemon is only as good as its move pool allows it to be, so how good is Mudsail's move pool? Well, it's both good and bad, I'll say that. Because since Mudsail is a fairly new Pokemon, it didn't necessarily get a whole lot of moves from the new tutors, nor actually, since it doesn't have a previous generation, there are no moves from previously that it could get. However, the move plays gets are interesting and definitely are important with what I think Mera gets. First of all, we have double kick on this Pokemon too, which is, you know, how about that? We have Heavy Slam, Earthquake of course, we have High Horsepower, which is would be its exclusive move, isn't anymore, but it's basically a weaker uh, Earthquake, so Earthquake is where you want to go with. Uh, other than that, we have Super Power, and uh, when it comes to the TM moves, um, I would say the only one worth mentioning here is actually, as stated before, Rest. But we also have already mentioned like stuff like Substitute, which could be an aspect with leftovers to be able to bulk yourself up even further. We have Low Sweep to kind of cut your opponent off of its um, speed. But Rock Slide is his only good rock move yet. It doesn't get Stone Edge, which is unfortunate because with 125 attack, you really just want to have that extra power. Rock Slide is a um, subpar filler, but at least it gets it. So I definitely should be glad for the little things you get. When it comes to the Egg Moves, we have Body Slam, Double Edge. Magnitude and close combat. So close combat is really good. Uh, definitely preferable over superpower because as you use the close combat, yes, you lose you bo both defenses goes down by one. But if the standby kicks in, then that shouldn't be an issue in the first place. Uh, when it comes to team moves, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I definitely say this. Uh, the best thing coming out of this is that you get stealth rocks. Uh, Must have makes for a fair stealth rocker, and it has a lot to do with that uh, it is bulky, it can soak hits fairly alright, but there is basically where it all ends. The other filler moves aren't better than the things it gets. For example, we have Iron Head, there's no reason, no reason to use an Iron Head or, jar or Heavy Slam, for example. Uh, then we have Low Kick, which could be decent, but Close Combat really does already resolve that. And then you have an Ever, which with 100 base defense or an attack, why would you have go for an, ev an Ever? There really wouldn't be a reason to do that at all. Standard set for Mudsdale, however, is depending on the variant you want to use. The rest Sleep Talk variant with Earthquake and uh, Close Comet or Heavy Slam is fairly decent. The bulky with Leftovers with Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, Rock Slide, I believe, and Toxic are also kind of alright. But my favorite one is still as stated before, the Choice Bandit variant, fully offensive with max HP, actually. And uh, the standard moveset for that one is Earthquake, Close Combat, Heavy Slam, and Rock Slide. Though the last move can be actually filled up with anything, I would definitely say that um, Double Edge is interesting because it already has high enough HP to be able to spam that move and it definitely hurts almost just as bad as a Rock Slide do anyway. And of course, since you're, you just want to neutral damage, normal really just kind of results the best of that if you're asking me. But overall, Mudsteel is a very, very interesting Pokemon, definitely one-dimensional in many aspects, but so is Marowak. They're supposed to be offensive even though they are slow. And they both do this fairly right. It comes down to which one does it better. And here's where I think it comes down to personal preference. Because in one aspect, yeah, Mud still is due towards not being forced to wearing a thick club. Uh, it doesn't hit as hard, but at the same time, it's bulkier to so be able to be around for a longer time. But it doesn't hit hard enough and have nothing to set up with. And there are many aspects to make the Pokemon badly. Marowak has a lot of moves to be able to complement itself with. And while it isn't as bulky, it makes sure that whatever it hits, it dies. It's basically something like that. It's a decent stealth rocket for that very same reason. And of course, in previous generation, this Pokemon was a primal threat. And now, of course, it's decent in NU and PU due to the Trick Room aspect. But 
Mudsteel is kind of that too. There are a lot of things going on with Mudsteel that really does make it for an interesting Pokemon. So if we're going to reevaluate this Pokemon, I'm going to try to say which one that could for the longest time benefit teams in both its tier but also in a league concept. And here's where I think unfortunately actually Marowak falls short. I do believe Mudsteel is due to its bulk can resolve a lot more issues than Marowak can do, while Marowak definitely can secure kills. Um, it really is it's whether or not it gets to do that if it is preps for it. And I definitely believe in a league aspect that mud still due to the extra bulk can do a lot more work. And it's a much, much more safer stuff rather than Marowak, mainly because it's bulky enough to withstand the most damage output than Marowak ever could. That said, I don't think Marowak on its own right is a bad Pokemon. It's tremendous, and I think in the right hands it can be. Well, it can ruin teams quite nicely, but Mud still has a layer to it. It is, isn't born to be forced to be using one item to be as strong, and I mean, once you knock off a Marowak's Fit Club, it's game over. Marowak is useless. Mudsteel is a tremendous threat no matter what, and with the rest sleep top with it, one that I think has a lot more merit to it. It is very hard to deal with. The 125 in that stack really makes sure that whatever hits still got, actually hits hard, even if though it's uh, defensively active, its attack really is up there to be able to actually break a pot team eventually. And I said that the choice banner variant my god is it impossible to switch into it's tremendous i love it but yeah with that said guys what do you guys which which what do you guys think about these pokemon which one do you prefer do tell me about it in the comment section down below and join us next week for a really really interesting matchup a matchup i would wanted to do for quite some time but haven't found opposing pokemon to be able to be on par with until of course generation seven